Kang is a series that dates all the way back to an arcade release in 1989. Known as Buster Brothers in the US, the game was converted to major home computer systems such as the ZX Spectrum, the Commodore 64 and the Commodore Amiga. Sequels and compilations later appeared on systems such as the Super Nintendo and the Sony PlayStation before 2016's Pang Adventures appeared on current gen consoles. Well, it has now made its way onto the Nintendo Switch, but once you pop, will you just want to stop? I'm Glenn for Switch Up, thank you to the developers for the review copy, and now, let's find out. The premise of Pang is, and always has been, a simple one. You control a boy who must pop balloons that are dropping from the sky with your harpoon gun. The crux, though, is that every time you pop a balloon, it splits into two smaller balloons. As the balloons fall thick and fast from the top of the screen, it becomes about managing how and when to pop them. Do you pop all of the big ones first, leaving you with double the amount to deal with but smaller targets to dodge, or do you focus on one balloon at a time so as to avoid the utter pandemonium that can ensue when you have a large number of smaller balloons left? The main bulk of your time may well be spent in the tour mode, which is basically the campaign. This sees you travelling around the world to fight an alien threat. To aid you on your balloon popping quest are a number of power-ups that sometimes appear on the playing field. These include, but are not exclusive to, a rapid-fire gun that temporarily replaces your harpoon gun, a force field that will allow you to take a hit without losing a life, and a sand timer that will stop all of the balloons on screen, allowing you to get a few free hits in. Of course, it's more than just balloons falling from the sky, and the level design will change the further you get into the game. Platforms will change the trajectory of the balloons, for example, or animals such as crabs can be used to your advantage to pop balloons for you. Sometimes the environment itself will cause you just as much of a threat as the balloons. There is a time limit for each level, and later levels become almost puzzle-like, as you will need to think about the best way to use everything available to you in the level in order to pop the balloons in time, and even more so if you want to reach the target score given for each level, and it's this interesting premise of puzzle-like action that gives the game its real hook. Hitting multiple balloons without missing a shot builds your combo meter, and should you make it a whole level without one misplaced shot, you will net a nice score bonus at the end of the stage. Sometimes this extra bonus is imperative should you want to hit the score target, so be sure to hone your shooting skills for maximum accuracy. There are also boss battles after every 15 levels or so, and these are a nice diversion from the regular stages and do well to keep things interesting. Defeating a boss will see you move on to the next country and the next set of levels. As well as being able to play tour mode in single player, Pang Adventures also includes a very welcome local co-op mode. Playing with two players increases your target score to compensate for the potential extra help you now have at your disposal, and as well as the obvious advantage of the extra firepower that comes with having a second player with you, there is also the chance to revive your companion should they get hit. Standing by them whilst they are down will see a bar fill up, and as long as you are able to stay with them for the duration of the bar filling, they will be revived. Again, this can be a balancing act of wanting to help your partner but being aware that putting yourself in danger and being hit yourself during this time will see you both fail the level and have to restart. As well as tour mode, there are two other modes available. These are score mode, which is unlocked after successfully completing the tour mode, and panic mode. Panic mode is a survival mode of sorts, which sees you given three lives in which to rack up the highest score possible whilst attempting to reach level 99. These scores will then be posted to the online leaderboard, of which I am currently in the top 10 as per the time of this video, and this mode is great fun and insanely addictive. The incentive to increase your score and attempt to nudge yourself further up that leaderboard saw me return time and again, and I will not rest until I am the best darn balloon popper in the world and sit top of that board. The controls are as simple and responsive as they need to be, with movement being handled with the left stick as you would expect, and you fire in your weapon with the A button. That's all there is to them, they never once hindered me in what I needed to do, and the multiplayer can also be played with one Joy-Con each, which is always a good thing. Gameplay is a fun, addictive and enjoyable experience, and receives 17 out of 20, whereas the controls receive 18 out of 20. Pang Adventures goes for a hand-drawn style as opposed to the sprite-based nature of its forefathers. 
Everything in the foreground, including characters, items, and of course the balloons, use this style, whereas the backgrounds use a style that looks almost painted or, at times, quite photographic. This blend enables the foreground characters to stand out against the backgrounds, which is useful when things start to get quite intense. Each country has a fairly cliched background attached to it, and the same can be said for the music on the stages too. There is only one track for each of the themed levels, but it never grates too much thankfully, due to each track being of a decent length, meaning that there is no repetitive loop within the level. The chiptune nature of the music is also very pleasing, and was definitely a good choice. Visuals receive 14 out of 20, whilst audio also receives 14 out of 20. Pang Adventures costs £8.99 or $9.99, and I think that this is a case of the price being extremely fair as long as you know what you're signing up for. Tour mode will last you a good few hours, and the option to play with a second player makes this a lot of fun but I think it's safe to assume that a lot of the replay value will come from the high score chasing aspect of the game once the tour mode is finished. Thankfully the online leaderboards in panic mode as well as the separate score targets for single and multiplayer in tour mode make this a very addicting part of the deal. Value gets 17 out of 20. To conclude, Pang Adventures retains everything that made the series such a blast to play back in the day while adding a couple of new elements to the mix too. The Switch really is becoming quite the portable arcade machine, with many arcade classics already available on it in one form or another, and I'm happy to report that Pang now takes its place among these classics in the form of Pang Adventures. Its decently sized campaign, with the option of two players and the great high score chasing modes too, mean that I will be returning to this game little and often. Pang Adventures receives a switch up score of 80%. Many thanks as always everybody for watching, please do remember to leave a like if you like what you've just seen and consider subscribing for all things Switch all the time and just a quick thank you to all of our Patreons, a list that is growing bigger and bigger by the day, many many thanks to you. Take it easy everybody and as always, happy gaming.